So you're thinking about buying some scuba equipment and you're thinking used equipment. Here are my top do's and don'ts when it comes to buying used scuba equipment. How's it going dive buddies? It is Kyle here and we are back with another quick scuba tip. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what I think are some very important do's and don'ts when it comes to buying scuba equipment. Now, as a side note, before I get started, there are some of you out there that have a passion for vintage diving and who love collecting and buying old scuba equipment for your little museum that you've got growing inside your basement. Um, this video really isn't for you. This video is for the newly certified divers out there who are looking to purchase some equipment and aren't quite sure what to do and are trying to maybe save some money and have seen some equipment at some garage sales maybe or online and want to know if it's a good deal. This video is more for them. Now also if you're looking to sell your used equipment, that is a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day and there's a whole list of things that you should know when it comes to selling your used equipment, but we're going to cover that in a whole nother video altogether. So do number one, do ask your dive shop for advice. Ask them the pros and cons about buying used versus buying new. Maybe if you found an ad or you have a buddy who's willing to tell you something, ask them, or show them the ad or take it to them and ask them if they think it's a good deal or not. They're gonna be completely honest with you on whether it's a good deal or you should consider looking for something else. Do number two, do think about parts policies. A lot of manufacturers now offer parts policies when it comes to purchasing new regulators from authorized dealers. Buying second hand, even if it's from your buddy, um, voids that warranty and parts policy and now every year when you get them serviced you're paying for the parts. This can add up and sometimes be very costly if it's not just your regulator but maybe your partners and or if you've got the whole family uh, set up with equipment that can add up real quickly. Sometimes spending a few extra hundred dollars up front for a new regulator um, not only are you getting a new regulator versus, uh, versus potentially a 10 year old regulator, but now every year when you get it serviced, you're only paying for the labor and not paying for the parts. Do number three, do your research. This research means you need to know exactly what you're doing. This goes back to my first do about talking to your local dive shop and getting up to speed on all the different brands and models out there. As a new diver, if you're shopping used, you probably don't know all of these brands, as well as you probably don't know which models are current, um, as well as which regulator and which system may be more appropriate for the type of diving and conditions that you're going to be in. Do number four, do support your local dive shop. Now this goes well and beyond the first do of simply asking them for advice. I always recommend that you at least give your local dive shop a chance um, for your business, a chance to create a long-term customer, a chance to create some new dive buddies and some new friends. You never know, the local dive shop may even have their own line of used equipment that they're trying to get rid of, or they may just have overhauled their entire rental equipment and are now trying to sell the old stuff off, and they'll be more than happy to help you swing a deal. So just let them know that you're new, let them know that you're on a budget, budget, and I'm sure they will more than likely help you out. Do number five, do make sure it's still serviceable. This is important when it comes to the regulators, the BCDs, and the tanks. You don't want to get caught spending additional money or money on equipment that you can't even get serviced and used properly. So please make sure that this information is given to you from wherever you're buying it used and or you've taken it to your dive shop before you've bought it to make sure that it is still serviceable and or if it needs to be serviced or can be serviced down the road. And lastly, do number six, do make sure you remember please that this is all life support equipment. Just keep that in mind when you're shopping around used and you're looking at that old ruggedy BCD at a garage sale for 30 bucks or 20 bucks, um, that your life need, your life depends on this and you need this equipment to work 100%, 100% of the time for your safety. So just keep that in mind. All right, and now for the don'ts. Don't number one, don't just buy the cheapest thing out there. Remember, this is all life support equipment and just because it's the cheapest thing out there doesn't necessarily mean it's the right fit for you. You want equipment that is current and by current I mean serviceable and in good working order. Don't number two, don't buy online and then take all of your equipment to your dive shop and expect them to fix it for free. You'd be surprised how many people don't, don't get that one. That's important. Remember that one. If you don't remember any of the other ones, remember that one. Don't number three, don't buy used basic scuba equipment. I'm talking masks and snorkels, maybe even fins and boots. Hygiene and fit are very important on this one. Don't number four, don't assume that because the regulator hasn't been used that it's still good. Just because the regulator was used once back in 1990 does not mean it's ready to go today in 2018. And lastly for the don'ts, don't number five, don't forget that there are lots of deals out there when it comes to used scuba equipment that can be safe, 
can be serviceable and can ultimately bring you many, many years of fun, safe diving. And there we have it guys, just some of my thoughts on some do's and don'ts when it comes to buying used scuba equipment. I personally, I don't think buying used is a bad idea. There's nothing wrong with it, but there are some very important things that you need to know as you're going into it and as you're shopping around. And those are just some of the things that I thought would be key for you to keep in mind if you're shopping around on the Craigslist of the world, the Kijijis of the world, and the Ebays of the world. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts on buying used scuba equipment? Maybe drop us a note in the comment section below, or if you're on the hunt for some used equipment and have some questions, feel free to drop a note and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching guys and happy diving.